Captain Chip. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Basil Lanes in Dartmouth. I'm Paul Manny with Bruce Steven. And, Bruce, we've made it to the second round of our mixed championship. Everybody from here on in are winners. <laughs> well, I tell you, we are producing winners after winners. As we do move on now to the second round, the two teams you'll see today, of course, won in the first round. But just before we go on to today's match, the first match of the second round, let's go back and look at our final match in the first round. And at dandy it was. We saw Rose Orson and Robert Sloan White Bull, identical 231s for a 4.62 total. And they beat out Sheila Brown and Jade Pugh, but not before a pretty exciting finish. Mm. In fact, Robert Sloan White had a little pressure on him when he got up the ball in the 10th frame as uh, Fleur was open, I believe, uh, for that team, and uh, Brown was bowling well. And the pressure was on Robert a little bit, but he came up big with the spare you're going to see here. This was in the 10th frame, and there it is. There's the shot. Then goes back. Left and right-hand side. Salon White had a spare, picked up five bonus pins, and they went on to win that one. So that was the end of round one. Now it's on to round number two. Okay, you've met all of these bowlers before, but let's go through it again. We have Barb Durling from Lawrencetown, Nova Scotia. Bowls at the MLK Lanes in Middleton with a 110 average. Barb's partner, of course, Mike O'Farrell, comes to us from New Glasgow. Bowls at the Heather Lanes with a 116 average. Opposing Barb and Mike today in round two, Peggy Glenn from Halifax. Bowls at the Bell at Bowlerama with a 111 average. And Peggy's partner is Charlie Sloan White, also from Halifax, Charlie with that big 119 average. And we'll get right to the bowling, our first episode in round two, right after these messages. I can't see the difference. Can you see the difference? No, I can't see the difference. Can you see the difference? People can't see the difference between clothes washed in ABC versus a leading higher price detergent. I can't see the difference. Is there a difference? Price is the difference. With ABC, you can save up to 20% and still get your whole wash clean and white. I can't see the difference. Why pay more? By ABC. Toyota gives new meaning to the word special. Special two-tone paint. Special wheels, special seats, special AM FM radio, and special name. Introducing the 1989 Special Edition Toyota 4Runner. Your turn, Dad. Special from the paint on down. Hi, I'm Brian Phillips. Monday morning at 7-Eleven, tune in to 92 CJCH for the easiest way to win $2,000 cash. Monday morning at 7-Eleven, I'll pull a name out of a hat. If your name matches, call me. The ninth caller wins $2,000. The 92 CJCH name game. It's as easy as knowing your own name. Monday morning at 7-Eleven, someone's going to win $2,000 cash. It might as well be you. And it's only a 92 CJCH. Favorites of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. We knew what it was going to take to make Eastern Building Centers your best value. So we brought together quality building materials, and we have them at the lowest prices you'll find anywhere. We skipped the frills and concentrated on providing helpful advice that could save you even more money. You will notice the difference the very next time you visit one of our stores. Eastern Building Centers. We're your best value, and we plan to keep it that way. Back to the bowling here on uh, ATV on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, just about to begin the bowling, actually. This is, of course, our first week in round number two. Looking at Barb Durling from Lawrencetown, not to be confused with the uh, well-known beach on uh, Nova Scotia's eastern shore. It's Lawrencetown in the uh, beautiful valley. Barb bowls at uh, LMK Lanes and Middleton has a 110 average and just picked herself up uh, four pins here on the first ball. Back in the first round, Barb Durling and her partner... Michael Farrow bowled against Rita White and Gerald Cormier. They had an excellent total of 481. Barb Durling, you're watching her here. She opened with a 133 and then had a 113. So she bowled extremely well in that first round. Off to a little tough start here, though, with the five box. An excellent 481 total for Durling and O'Farrow in the first round. Peggy Glenn and Charlie Sloan White, though, had a 496 as they beat Irma Cormier and Jim Curvin. We remember that wet match well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a dandy. But a big, big total. 
Oh, there. Look at this. Look at this action. Poor Barb Durley. Wood coming across and turning. Now, that's not such a great thing to happen. She can come cut, kick in from the side a little bit. She should be able to get them both. She goes Ooh, went that way. way. Looks like she might have tried to catch the side of the wood. Looks like that is exactly what she was I thought she for. might. I thought she might have come around at that edge of the wood there. Yeah. Well, she'll go for a 10 box here and uh, gets 10. Second time out. So, so 10 and a 5, 15, 5 under. Dropped 5 pins in that first box. Just getting a little rid of a piece of wood that uh, ended up in the channel there. Barb Durling sits down and says, hello, Peggy Glenn. Well, this is Peggy Glenn, and uh, as we mentioned when she appeared in the first round, she's teamed up with Charlie Slonway. It's all done by the luck of the draw, and as luck would have it, she drew her brother-in-law, Charlie Slonway. So it's a little bit of a family affair here with Glenn and Slonway. Peggy Glenn gets off to the right-hand side a little bit from Islesville Street in Halifax. Also to the Bears Road Bolarama and Halifax Shopping Center. Right on that head pin, good drop there. Wood coming back to roll in front of that eight pin. Big, big family Peggy comes from. Six sisters and two brothers. Brother Pete and his brother repeat. <laughs> Just missing on the left hand side. And Peggy will open with a nine. She's an invoice clerk at CFB Halifax. Married, two children, Ricky and Annette. Wow. Just call them children, young adults. Peggy has a 111 average. Back in round number one, she had a 116 and finished with an excellent 135. Oh, very, very well. Peggy gets off to that flying start. Perhaps we'll get a chance to, to look at her approach. She charges down that runway. Stands right at the end of the approach, takes full steps. And takes an eight box for her second. It is a two-string competition. Each of her bowlers bowling two strings, ten frames to each, of course. And uh, let's say hello to Michael Farrell now. Who comes to us from New Glasgow, quite a golfer. Mike, uh, new to our ATV series this time around, but uh, certainly made his presence felt in that first round with an excellent 119, followed that up with a 116, and he carries that 116 average, and he has a good leave here with the three and the five. Must be on the pin on the right-hand side. You should get it. No, you're on the five. From Stellarton Road in New Glasgow is Mike. Car dealer, O'Farro Chevaux. Two children, ages one and four. As Paul mentioned, likes to golf, play a little baseball. 448 is high triple, excellent high triple. And as we mentioned a moment ago, he carries the 116 average. So this guy is a real good one, and he showed it in round one with that 119 and then a 116. Right good. That head yeah. pin. Solid seven. Wood coming back, Bruce, that uh, catches a piece of uh, that dead wood and will stay to the side of that seven, but he's got wood coming back now. Those other two pieces have kind of separated and moving off to the sides. He has a good setup here. Should be not too much of a problem for him to bear this up. Shouldn't be a problem at all. Ooh! Got it. the nose of the wood. Drove it straight back through. So, Mike Farrell comes up with the spare in the second frame. We've met three of the four bowlers on today's show. Let's go to the fourth. You're looking at them right now. And as you can see, his name is Charlie Sloan White. Charlie, in round number one, tossed a 131 and a 114. And he bowled very, very well from Skeena Street, Halifax. He's a checker with Clark Transport. Or does that mean he plays checkers? I don't think so. No. I think the job's uh, a little yeah. more involved than that. <laughs> He's got the <laughs> five, seven, and nine here. Oh, Charlie playing a tough piece of wood there. Scooted around, got the seven form, leaves five and nine, so he'll go for a ten box here. Shouldn't be too much of a problem if he can find that front pin. When Charlie is not checking, he's playing cards. And bowling, of course, has a 119 average. 451 high triple. And Charlie wraps it up very simply in four words, says, good to be here. Always is. Yeah. Well... Nice to have Charlie here. A real plus. Both on the lanes and off. 
keeps everybody loose. One, six, ten, those three pins on the right, and in behind is the eight, which is the only one standing now. Wood coming back will move in front of that pin, might get a little tilt off the uh, side of the channel. I just don't know where it's going to go right now, it's still moving. Don't think it's going to come into play. The bowlers have been told that uh, they can roll on the, on the uh, they can bowl rather on the rolling wood, and uh, that's what Charlie the, did right there. So we go back to the order, and uh, here is Barb Durling. Barb Durling, as you see it there, tough box to open with a five, and then come up with a fifteen or uh, ten. Go fifteen. Now to the right hand side here. So Barb's just searching a little bit. Still has that front pin to go for, of course. That is where she'll want to put the ball now. Not to concentration. Ooh, oh, again, to the right hand well, side. She's just not bringing, she's not dropping the shoulder right down, I don't think. I'll take another look at it. We try to see it from behind there. She's getting that ball well up to the right hand side, not getting the good ball through. This time she sinks it deep, though. And she will score an eye. A real clutch third ball for Barb Deerling. Produces the nine. Goes to the other side now. Punched again on the right hand side. She throws the opposite of a backup ball, Bruce, uh, in that she is a right handed bowler. When she lets go of it, the ball rolls from uh, right to left as opposed to left to right. Ooh, through the hole. Now, again, she's got a real tough shot here. A lot of pressure, only early in the match. But still, a lot of pressure for Barb. Pulls a little five pin, this Barb early. Nice it down. Ooh, through the hole again. It's that and black it's hole, real, that terrible real black tough, hole that you read uh, about in boy. science uh, journals. Barb Durling really wants to sit down and just kind of get herself mentally back together again after that two box. And it's real tough. She put it down the hole twice. Peggy Glenn off to the left-hand side. Peggy open with a nine, then had an eight. Found the front oh, pin that good time. Recovery. Good hit there. Wood coming back. That will not come into play. I don't think it's touching a little bit on the wood at the end of the uh, lane. And she's just got that sole pin, 10, in the corner, which she is going to miss, unfortunately. Take a nine box out of that. So a nine, eight, and nine for Peggy Glenn has dropped four pins. And we'll try and recoup somewhat here on the fourth frame. She's got yes, it. Yes, sir. Two pins. A lot of distance between them. Falling. They look, they look like the Twin Towers going there. Uh, Paul at the end. There they are. And watch them go together here. Look out. <laughs> nice looking strike for Peggy Glenn. Well, Mike Farrell. Mike O'Farrell up right now on the fair. Well, he's counted. Five on them. Three, six, ten, nine, and a cluster on the right side with that piece of wood. That might come into play, that piece of wood, but he somehow has to get something over there. I'm not sure how he's going to do it. I mean, he can't do it that way. Looked like he was trying to bring the ball over off the pin. Now he'll play it more in the inside. He does. Puts it with an eight. Michael Farrow goes to 32, two over after three. Over to the other side now. Michael Farrow coming to us from down the Stellaton, New Glasgow area. Just next door on Picto, Bobby Beaton taking this one in. What a great sportsman he is. Oh, yeah. In all kinds of sports, from baseball to hockey to boxing to you oh, name yeah. it. He's been, uh, he's been there. Yeah, absolutely. Five and ten is the uh, split facing Michael Farrell and all oh, went that was everywhere expensive. on the plate except for the corner in which that ten pin stands. Really, really tough. Makes it good it this down. time though and gets his ten. So good Michael game. Farrell now at 42, two over, thanks to that mark in the second frame in which he only got five, compensated for the nine in the first frame and the eight in the third frame. 
And here comes uh, Charlie Slime White, who had a 9 and a 10, so of course is at 1 under right now. Bound the front pin. Leaves a bit of a picket fence formation in the back with the uh, 6 out in front, and then in the back row, of course, the 8, 9, and 10. Yeah, that's the problem, is to get something over here. Here's the shot. Oh, you saw it. You put something over there, right, right between the two pins. Not a bad try. A little fine. Oh, I tell you, this guy wood, doesn't nice leave. Yeah, yeah, he didn't go for one of those. He put that wood in play, come off the wood, and got one, and uh, gave him a run for the both of them. Charlie splash a little smile there. Of course, we had a little bit of fun with Charlie in the first round because Peggy Glenn had a higher two-string total than he did, and uh, Charlie had, he took some ribbing from him. Yeah, he did. Just by a pin or two, Peggy with a 116 and 135, Charlie had a 131 and 114. Add that up quickly. Couple of pins. Charlie there comes out of it with a nine after two. And we'll now go for the last pin. And gets it. So, count of ten for Charlie Sloan White. Okay, four frames under a belt. We'll come back with more right after these messages. Horton takes a fresh look at donut makers. Theirs and ours. Actually, our donut makers are too busy making donuts to make television commercials. But they send their best. Tim Horton takes a fresh look at coffee. It's tricky telling the difference between our fresh brewed coffee and theirs just by looking. Of course, that's the real world. This is television. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelt for the hottest show on home video, Car Wars. Over 130 spectacular crashes by some of professional racing's top drivers. There's cars, there's bikes, there's trucks, there's even boats. There's never been so much action packed into one home video. Car Wars. All the thrills, all the spills of the fastest, most dangerous sport in the world. And you get to see them in the comfort of your own home. You won't believe your eyes. These are some of the most spectacular crashes ever filmed. Car Wars. Also ask for hockey, the lighter side. Football, hit after hit. Hockey, a time to remember. Or fast cars and beautiful women. The home video of your choice, only $19.99 from K5 International. Available at Zellers, Wolco Woolworths, Kresge Kmart, and Canadian Tire. Back to the bowling on ATV, a Saturday afternoon. It's the Mark 10 Mixed Candlepin Championship. Second round, first episode. Here's Barb Durling, who well, Barb, uh, is at 26. Barb had that two box in the fourth frame. She's up here in the fifth, and she really wants to come back and recover after that. And she'll get a chance. She was off to the right-hand side a little bit. She has, as you can see, nice coverage in here, covering this pin. She's doing a little work on the approach there. I just wants to really keep her mental game going. Concentrate on the pins. Oh, tough because she hit the object pin. So Barb Durling working here on the fifth frame. First string of two for Barb. Now she lays it down. Good Got up. Ten. Nice ten for Barb Durling. She'll go to the other side now. That's certainly... Uh, detract, detect, won't take away. 
<laughs> from her confidence. You just wanted to retract that last yeah, comment, didn't you? Yes, yeah. 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 Let me retract that last comment. Oh. Well, still 1,400 par, so Barb has a lot of ground to make up yeah. just to achieve uh, her average today. She's got the ability. No, no question doubt about, about that. that. An excellent 110 average. Nice coverage here on the 7. Too far to the right. She's really fishing. Not getting that ball to go just where she wants. Barb Darling. Comes out of that with a 9, though. Scared the 7 a little bit. And gives way to Peggy Glenn. Uh, still, Barb, you just saw, just stepping off the approach, a little bit of frustration. It's only early, 14 frames to go. Not that far off the pace. Peggy Glenn up now had a, a strike rather in the fourth, so she's open on that strike right now. Love to throw the double, but she's off to the left hand side too far. Four so far. Now she really wants to avoid that gap. Oh, four. Great try. Big count of nine. On the mark. And gets a single pin, does Peggy Glenn. So she's rolling along very nicely now. She goes five over prior to 55. That count. Goes to the other side. We'll work on the ball. She's set. Good looking ball. Oh. She's going to get it. Uh-uh, she moved that 10 back and forth, which stands in the corner. So she's got the 4-7 uh, on the left-hand side, and that's probably where she'll aim now. Well, it's going to be real tough to get all three of these pins, no matter how you cut it. Goes to the left-hand side, now we'll come to the right. Peggy working hard here. We'll come out of it with a nine. She turned around before that ball was all the way down to the end of the lane, and Six for good reason, four. missed out on it. Here is Michael Farrell, Barb Gerling's partner. Mike, of course, with that mark in the uh, second frame at 42 right now, two over. And side, faced with a, sh a similar shot that uh, Peggy Glenn had a moment ago. This guy was real exciting in that first round. 119, 116. Good try there. Good solid hit on that front end. He's got the five and the seven as he looks to try and get his ten. And well, I tell you, he was going for ten too. Trying to chip that pin over. But it'll be an eight for Mike. Mike goes to even par now. 50 after five. Both Mike and his partner Barb exploring the black hole phenomena that many astronomers <laughs> and physicists have been trying to understand over the past decade or so. Many a bowling ball has disappeared into that black hole, never to be seen again. Somewhere there's thousands of bowling balls floating around in the sea of nothingness. <laughs> Four horsemen for Mike O'Farrell. Bang! One down and three to go. Oh, he gets them all. Mike O'Farrell goes now to an even 60. Charlie Slumway steps up. Charlie, 9-10, 9-10. You see his count there. This is across the left-hand side. Well, we saw Peggy Glenn, Mike O'Farrell, and now Charlie Slumway with a similar shot in that big black hole on the left-hand side. Not surprising to see that happen because you don't want to be over that left hand side, so consequently you stay a little away from it and go too far quite often on the right hand side. Here comes Charlie coming back, though, comes out of it with a nine. Well, Charlie Sloan White has got a little rhythm going here. Nine, ten, nine, ten, nine. And let's see if he can get a ten. Throw a little background music behind it, and you might have a hit. <laughs> Charlie would like to get 10 here with one ball. 
And he's going to have a chance. Now a chance to get all ten and two. I'm pining for a strike. <laughs> Just working in song titles here, folks. Don't, uh -huh. mind, don't mind me. <laughs> oh, Sharpie, Slon, White. Well, he's going to have a chance at another ten. All he's got to do is get that ten yeah. pin. Yes, sir, he's he got it. And the string, whether you like it or not, or whether he likes it or not, stays alive. 9, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10. We'll be back, Jack, in just a moment with more of the Mark 10 Mixed Candlepin Championship right here on ATV. Come on now, stretch out. Five more, four more. You can do it. Two more. Get it going. One more. Good. Honda believes the last thing you need from a lawnmower is a workout. So Honda mowers are carefully designed and built to run trouble-free for years and years. They come fully assembled with a two-year warranty. Just call 1-800-263-2866 for the Honda dealer nearest you. Oh, I've got to run. You look like you have been running all over town. I know. Why not try Towers? It's all in one store, all at the right prices. It's Sneaker Week in Towers Shoe Department, and every athletic style is 25% off. Athletic footwear for the entire family. Everything is on sale. Towers Sneaker Week. At 25% off, you can't afford to miss it. Towers. I'll try them. Now you're going places. Towers, your family's extra special store. It travels where there are no roads. One of a kind. The new Dodge Dakota 4x4 Sport with rear wheel anti-lock brakes, the untamed power of a fuel-injected V6, and a look that's lean and hungry for action. The new Dodge Dakota 4x4 Sport. A wolf in wolf's clothing. Chrysler. Changing the landscape. It's the 12th annual Nova Scotia Ideal Home Show, on right now at Exhibition Park. With everything from display rooms to exciting new products and services to build, repair, and renovate your home. There's so much to see and do at the Nova Scotia Ideal Home Show, and it's on right now. Exciting and new and all for you at the best show in town. At Exhibition Park. Six frames down. We'll have 14 more before this one is in the books. Here's Barb Durling, who really has been struggling through the first six, particularly the uh, first four, where she rolled a one, a ten, and then a nine, and a two. Five, ten, nine, two, and then a ten and a nine in the uh, fifth and sixth frames. Good news about this shot. She does have coverage over here on the uh, ten. She can get the ball over or play it on the inside. Throw the pin over. Too far to the left-hand side. Had to be on the number one. Yeah. So now it's the one and the ten. Just not getting that exactly where she would like to have it. And again, Barb finds space. The final frontier. At 53. You're counting the difference is uh, 18 pins unofficially. Four, going and slung away at this point in time. She wants that pin and she gets it. Now there's a good break for Barb Durney. Now what she wants to do is make sure she takes advantage of this break. She has to be a little bit careful with this one. We're taking a look at it. She got down here. She might drive that right through and leave the seven pin. Can't tell if she's covering that if it's covering that or not. Here's the shot. It is not covering the seven pin, and there was a problem. Had to come high on that dead wood. Barb says, will I ever get a break? This confidence builder down there, and it's not going to do anything for Barb's confidence right now. She gets a nine. It's a 62. Peggy Glenn is up right now. She's at 64. Right in that... The wood coming back if it turns One, and it two. does. Wow, that looks good. It's going to give her good coverage in behind. There's no doubt about that. This is not a bad. Well, 
The problem here is the 10 pin, the one right there. There's the shot, there's the 10. Wood coming back, though, it falls off the plate before it can do any damage. That other piece will sit in front. Just enough to be a distraction. Yeah, even that wood she has to be very careful with. No, oh, she wanted to play that on the outside, I think. Count nine for Peggy Glenn. You know, we have two teams that uh, in the first round uh, scored very, very well. We had uh, Derling and O'Farrell with a 481 total. Glenn and Sloan with that 496. And yet here we are, Peggy Glenn bowling in the eighth frame. We've only seen two marks in this competition so far. So quite a turnaround from round number one. Michael Farrow has a spare, and the lady you're watching right here has a strike. Punch straight through Peggy Glenn. So we do not have the abundance of marks, but it's an interesting match nevertheless because it's close. Mm. Another Peggy nine box from Peggy Glenn. Glenn. Nine, yeah. So we're going to say roughly 16 pins. Now that's not official, but it's about 16 pins for Glenn and Sloan White. Michael Farrow steps up on the approach, trying to maintain his par score, 60. Yeah. I should rephrase that and say that he's trying to break par and get ahead of it. He's got yeah. the 1-7 split. He's got the rocket right here, ready to take off. You see the angle on it as there's a little dip from the lane to the approach, and that pin is just setting on it. Hopefully it won't come back and bunk us in the haze. <laughs> yeah, Almost takes a seven. Gone. Get a little nervous looking at the pin. Get you like that. Ooh, boy, you got good action on that. Wrapped it around the seven, but it'll be a nine for Michael Farrow, so he slips one under par at 69. On a bowling league, 69, you pay a dime. <laughs> Bill's up the league fund a little bit. If that had been the case, Mike would have been oh, at 10 cents. Oh, it's going to go. So hit 69. This might not be that bad at all because he has a nice piece of wood in here not a bad angle he gets in there he'll get this one and this one he'll shoot that across and take the 10 let's see what happens here's the shot well he got the 10 left the 7 and now the 7's gone it'll be a 10 for Mike O'Faro well 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 38 frames down. Charlie says it's time. 38 frames, only two marks. Let's see what Charlie can do here. Very unusual for this caliber of bowling. Charlie's long white good hit. Now he had eight pin break earlier and took him one at a time. Now with that uh, formation, he should have the third mark of the day. Trying to break. Break that rhythm of 9-10. Oh, boy. Well, remember, Charlie opened with a 9, then had a 10, had a 9, had a 10, then a 9, then a 10. Looking at a 9 here. So far, would it get the 10? Yes, sir. Broke the rhythm. 9-10, 10 9-10, now. A pair of 10s. Charlie Sloan White. Time to start a new streak, I think. Boy, that's a streak that he doesn't want to continue. He wants mark, mark, mark. Charlie has a chance to mark here. He's had some chances. They've all had chances. A lot of eight-pin breaks for Charlie. Things just aren't going. No. Taking a little extra time on this one. He's got the two and the five. Right on the deuce, boy. That's three times he's done that on an eight-pin break, two pins side by side. He's picked off one of them. Can't explain it myself. Well, Charlie cleans the plate there and gets his 10 and acknowledges the round of applause from the crowd, as you can see. But uh, that is a very, very interesting turn of events for Charlie Sloan. White. he continues to uh, pin fairly well, all 9s and 10s. But uh, the key to this match right now might be Barb Durling. She's at 62, well under par. You see the score there, 141-159. But Barb Durling... Uh, well under par right now. If she can pick up the pace and get her game going, which I think she can, 
uh, it's going to make a, a big, big difference in this match because it's close at this point. Well, just 18 pins the difference, of course, Bruce, and uh, quite obviously nobody open on a mark because we've only had two to date in this entire competition uh, today. Um, eight pins, uh, eight frames so far. We've got uh, 12 more to go. We'll come back with the final two of the first frame in just a moment. When we decided to introduce a special new Toyota Camry, we wasted no time adding lots of not-so-standard features, like power windows and power door locks, color-coordinated bumpers, a four-speaker stereo cassette, custom carpet floor mats, and its own name, the Camry LS. And when we priced it as low as we did, we knew it would sell quickly. The new Toyota Camry LS. From the East Coast or the West Coast, from Toronto or in Munich, we can fly you to more destinations in Canada than any other airline. We've created the most extensive network this country has ever seen. Together with our partners, we offer you over 900 well-timed departures every business day. Because we have a name to live up to. Tag days are here at your Jeep Eagle dealers. And if you've ever wanted to own a Jeep, now's the time. Get back. Get versatility. Get terrific deals on Jeep Cherokee. Come in today and check out Comanche. Now with a sizzling $1,000 saving. Make your best deal on the fun-loving Jeep YJ. Now's the time to put yourself into a legendary Jeep. So hurry in today to Red Tag Days. Only at your Maritime Jeep Eagle dealers. 680 CFDR is different from any other Metro Radio station because of the music we play. More of today's favorite artists like Steve Winwood, John Cougar Mellencamp, Whitney Houston, Crosby Stills, Nash, and Young. 680 CFDR gives you more of your favorites. Fewer commercials every day and now commercial free Sunday. More music guaranteed. We are 680 CFDR, Metro's favorite hit. Good morning, looks like another gorgeous day. Just a couple of frames away from our halftime break here in the Mark 10 Mixed Candlepin Championship Saturday afternoon on ATV. I heard somebody in the crowd say, hey, Barb. Get it well, going. sorry, Paul. Barb, I'm sure, will never forgive me for saying this, but it's not meant in this way. It's just that she's an excellent bowler, and she's right now 18 pins under par, and her team is down by 18. So if Barb was on an even par, they'd be a tie match. But not for a minute are we blaming Barb for the fact that it's team is down by 18. Here's the shot. She's got them both. Well, Barb the... Durling, big, big mark here in the ninth. And boy, that has got to make her feel real good. Yeah, the string of bad luck has ended for Barb Durling. She'll try and maintain this uh, new wave approach. Marks. Marks aplenty is what we're looking for here. She's rolling on one right now, and she gets a... Uh, well, she's counted six there. Now, Peter Wood coming back. Ooh, oh, nice little backer. This is a great shot. Now, really, she's only dealing with three pins. One, two, and the four. The seven is covered nicely here. She gets those three, the seven will follow. She's a nice backer. Has to be on the front end. Oh, she's hey, got it. Oh, in the back door. In the back door, yeah, exactly well, right. She, she was too fine in the front end. She's too far to the right-hand side. She's going to chip that first pin, the one on the left, right across in front of all these three. See, there it goes, but it's coming back. Touches the four onto the two and drops down, takes the seven. Well, that's great. Barb Durling comes up with spares here in the ninth and the tenth. And boy, does she feel good about that. You can be sure. Cranks it up, lays it down. Going oh, a big... tough, tough break. Well, she got a couple of bonus pins there, so she finishes with an even 90. Barb Durling. At 10 under par. Barb Durling's average, of course, 110. So uh, when you uh, speak in relatives' terms, as far as she consider par, that's 20 under. I'll tell you what she did, though. She cut the lead down from 18 pins to just 10. And Peggy Glenn looking at a great spare chance. Now, we talked about the lack of marks. Only two in the first 40 frames. But Barb Dorning had two and nine and 10, and Peggy should have one here, and she does. So all of a sudden, the marks are starting to come for both teams. The ladies finishing very, very strong. 
So, Peggy Glenn, her team up by 10 pins right now. As we near the halfway mark, she has a chance to add to that total right now. He's down on account seven. That lead back up to 17 again, and she has an excellent spare chance with the one, two, four. Wants to be on that front pin. Yeah. Either side of it, really. That's the key. As long as she can cause a reaction. Peggy turned away from that shot when the ball's maybe halfway down the, the lane. She knew she was too far to the left-hand side. Big pin down there, though, to maintain that 17-pin lead. And she will miss it. So lead is now 16. 16, yeah. With the men to come, a couple of frames each. And then we will have completed the first string of two. You're looking at Michael Farrell. 79. Really like to put together a couple of marks here to finish. Charlie Slon White waiting in the wings. He's down too far to the right-hand side. Punched out a little bit. Oh, great-looking shot. Uh, Wood wrapping around the 10th. Talon had a gun. It might have knocked it over on the 6th. He would have got them all. Two big pins. Got them both. Michael Farrow gets another 10. He goes to 89 now. The difference once again is 17 pins. Make that 16. That's unofficial. Looking ball there. Punch right, through again. Three, four, and seven. Well, you've got a, two pieces of wood uh, behind the three here. One there, one there, which will give him a little backing, which means he'll get more action, try to get something over. Oh, oh he's got action. That pin went across there like a rocket. The ball, as you see, coming back up. But <laughs> Boy, I tell you, testing the metal of those garland pins. He shook our cameraman up, I think. <laughs> I'm not getting near that stuff. <laughs> Michael Farrow really had things moving down there. Charlie Sloan White steps up. Where's Mike with the 10? Finishes with a 99. Different steal of unofficially 16 pins. Let's see what Charlie can do here. He'd like to finish with a flurry. chance to mark. Seven pin drop with the uh, four, five, and the two out there in front. Two in front. He's got to be on that pin. Yeah. Which he is. He's got For it. a mark and his arms <laughs> go up. Whoa. <laughs> it's time He's and the, the time has come for a mark. His first of the uh, day. <laughs> Charlie Slomite moves over to the left hand approach to bowl his tenth frame and open for the first time. What a nice feeling that must be. Ooh. Well, it's been all nines and tens for Charlie, mostly tens, in fact, three nines. Now he finally hits the board in the ninth with the spare. So all, or at least three of the four bowlers picked up spares, but Charlie punched out. Boy, that's tough. Only two on it. Only two on it. Are you looking at a bundle here? Oh, my, 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 that is really tough. Might be facing his fourth nine box of the day to go at the four tens, five tens. All right, he's kind of come out of that with an eight, which is not all that bad for Charlie. He had a real mess down there for his third and final box to finish <laughs> off the string. And Charlie, you tell you, he gets things going up there, doesn't he? The crowd and everybody else, but he comes out of that with an eight. Touch of drama. Yes. Yeah. But I tell you, we've got a real interesting match here. I make it uh, roughly 16 pins or so. There you see the total scoreboard, Paul. Barb Derling at uh, 90, 10 under, but as we said, probably she feels it's 20 under since her average is 110. Michael Farrell got that mark in the second frame and then fell to 1 under with some good pinning to hold himself just to below par. Peggy Glenn, that strike in the fourth. And then a mark in the ninth to go out strong and finish with a 108. Again this week, she is uh, ahead of her partner, Charlie Slon White, in the scoring. Charlie with that 97, all those nines and tens, and then the mark in the ninth frame. So, 
it's uh, really interesting that here we are in the second round and our bowlers are not doing nearly as well as they did in round one. Makes you wonder what we're going to see in the second round, particularly Wait. in the case of uh, Barb Durling and uh, Glenn and Slom White, where they came on strongly in the ninth and tenth frames. We're going to come back with the second string right after these messages. need a little finesse, sometimes you need a lot. Sometimes you need a little finesse. Sometimes you need a lot. Sometimes you need a little finesse. Sometimes you need a lot. Got a second? I want to tell you about your rights. When you bring your General Motors car or truck into any independent body shop, it's your right to specify the make of replacement parts we install. But don't settle for imitation parts. Insist on quality GM bumpers, fenders, side panels, and moldings. Like the sign says, remember, GM parts are fit for your GM vehicle. Now you know your rights. You got the region, the boy. Drum. You got the clean shredded wheat. Honey taste so hard. Put fruit in the middle. Honey taste so good. Wheat with fruit in the middle. Honey taste like it should. Strawberry squares. Honey taste so good. Raisin in the square. Honey taste so good. The man love the blueberry. Honey taste so good. New Kellogg squares with fruit in the middle. Cause fruit in the middle Honey make it taste, taste so good. good. <laughs> Welcome to Rent Town, your rent or rent to own connection. When looking for a stereo, TV, or VCR, Rent Town's got it with no down payment. When you need a washer, dryer, refrigerator, or freezer, Rent Town's got it with same day delivery. When you're looking for home furnishings of all kinds, get them at Rent Town with no credit needed and no banks or finance companies involved. Get it on the double with no trouble at Rent Town, your rent or rent to own connection. the uh, first string with a flurry, a couple of marks, got only two on the second though to finish at 90 and under, and now she wants to perform the way she's capable of performing in this second string, because this is the last one, two string uh, competition. Yes, and she's starting off the way she started off the first string, she's off the front pin, really struggled to get on that front pin, and she's off the right hand side there, the crowd kind of picking up the pace a little bit, trying to get behind it. They know that we've got a good, real good bowler here who is struggling a little bit. Again, went through the fall. She starts off the second string the same way she started off the first with a five box. Oh, that is really, really tough to see Barb struggle. Let's see this time may be different. There's the ball is off to the right hand side, and again she's off to the right hand side, gets over on the two. Now she may want to make an adjustment up on the approach. Find a bigger ball, maybe. <laughs> No, I didn't mean to say that. It just slipped out. Right now, I see. I'd like to lay that ball right in there. Try to get things happening down there. Oh, look. You got a feel for it, really. Yeah, well, what she has to do is just move over on the approach. She's just not getting the ball where she wants. She moves over a step and uh, throw the same ball she's throwing now. She'll get it where she wants it. Now, it's easy to say that. Of course. And this time, she gets on the edge again. A little too flush and throws it with a seven. Oh, Brad. So disappointed. You can see the disappointment in her face. She just wants to hang real tough in there. And uh, things are bound to get a little better for you, Barb. With Peggy Glenn up right now. Peggy finished the first string with the 108. Gosh, a little problem with her uh, approach as well. Delivery off to the left-hand side. Boy, there's not enough said about the importance of your delivery. There it is. What a way to compensate for that first shot. Good play by Peggy Glenn to get the mark. She had them all on the right-hand side. She found that 1-3 pocket. And look at the wood. Off the kickback and take the 6 and then the 8. Just to give you a little comparison, as you watch uh, Peggy here bowl in the second frame, second string on that spare, just to give you a little comparison between 
Good count. Nine. Oh, he could no. get him. Oh, good count of nine. And I'll give you that comparison in a moment. We're going to take a look at this shot here. The wood on the move, but that wood should cover the pin, so she's got a real good shot. It just laid on the side of the wood. No problem at all. And she didn't do it. She got to the other side. I'm going to give you a comparison how the bowlers bowled in the first string at this match and how they bowled in their first string in round number one. Barb Durling had a 133. To open the day, she had a 90. Michael Farrow had a 119. Round one. To open the day, he had a 99. Peggy Glenn, she's close, a 116. Round number one. Today, to open, she had a 108. Charlie Sloan, like 131. Today, a 97. Inexplicable. Mm. Well, the good thing is they're all off the game a little bit, and that makes it close. Solid five pin there for Michael Farrell. Boy, this guy does make things happen down there. Amazing how he can move that wood around. Yes, I have a theory. And my theory is this. <laughs> yes, Professor. <laughs> well, Barb Durling, of course, has been having a tough time today getting a goal, evidenced by that five box, and that may have set the tone. Yeah. I mean, we saw it in the end uh, when Barb came up with uh, those two uh, spares. Well, the competition uh, followed suit. Yep. Peggy Glenn with a mark in her uh, ninth frame. Charlie Sloan White picked up the pace with a mark in his ninth frame. Only got two on it. But the bowlers tend to bowl at the level at which the whole tournament is going. Very good, sir. That, that is my <laughs> it, Actually, it makes a lot of sense, and uh, you can be proven right by looking at the scoreboard. And I think that does happen. I think, oh, nice try there by Mike, just missing the 10. But you can get lulled to sleep a little bit. And if uh, the marks aren't coming, and it's, well, I don't want to say dull, but uh, need to say the abundance of marks, of course, picks up the pace and puts a little spark in the air. If that's not happening, you can kind of just roll along, saying, well, I might not be marking, but neither are they, so it's okay. Charlie Sloan White up right now to begin his second string. Good ball. I believe needs the 10. piece of wood on the right hand side could help him a little bit. No, it's going to be well out of the way. Well, the wood not the... It's going to be really tough to get to get both the 10 and the 7 here. He's down low in the wood. He may leave the 7. He's up high. Well, that's what, exactly what he did. He tried it. He got down low in the wood. Did leave the 7. If he had it got high, the chances are he would have got the 7 but left the 10. Rock and a hard a helicopter there, yeah. yeah. Seven pin in the corner for ten bucks. Charlie Sloan has it. Well, pins well, gets his ten. Charlie has been very, very well in the first round. All tens and nines, and then he finished with a spare and an eight. Opens with a ten here. with that nine pin in behind. I think the story of today's match basically has been so far the bowlers have not been on the front pin a lot. Oh, there's a good shot by Charlie Sloan White. A little late to go was the seven, but it did go. One more time as we look at it, watch the pin on the far left-hand side. It's not going to go. Or is it? It is. Well, you remember that theory that I didn't was think you could do that twice in a row. <laughs> yes? That theory? I have that theory in the... There he is mine. <laughs> well, Curly Sloan White just marked. I wonder what this will do to Barb Durling. I wonder if she'll well, catch fire. As well. I'll tell you, this Holy is a real nice hit. Is. Now, that's the first time she really hit well on the front end. She threw with a little more confidence that time, I think. Of course, she had time to sit down yep. and get herself together. We yes. saw her when she walked away from those the last thing? two frames, how disappointed she was. Yep. She's been concentrating. Oh, can my, be the key. I don't oh. believe it. I wouldn't mind seeing that one again, I'll tell you, because the ball just came right around. And just touch the... Well, hope, hopefully she'll look at this as a fluke and not let oh. that get to her concentration. That is a real, real shame. She comes back and gets her 10, though, but uh, you really have to feel sorry for Barb there because she hit the shot pretty good. The ball wrapped around, touched the 10, but not enough to take it over. As long as she doesn't feel sorry for herself. <laughs> okay. See if she can find that head pin. Well, she's getting closer. Just, she may have made an adjustment up on the approach. To the Same to lead that Charlie Sloan White had just moments ago. He converted it. Barb was watching intently, I'm sure. Let's see if she can do it. 
Gonna be on that front end. Oh, she is. Boy. And just Again. leaves the nine. Well, I tell you what, she is showing flashes of brilliance here in the third and fourth frame. So all of a sudden, maybe she's got her game right back where she wants it again. Not a bad try there on a tough piece of wood. A 10 and a 9 for Barbara Durling. And Peggy Glenn steps up. Well, plenty of time yet for Barb to catch fire. Six more frames, yeah. of course, before this one is over. Here's the uh, lady who's impressed us uh, both in round one and here again in round two. Mark on the first frame of the second straight. It's 29, 9 over. You can just feel a mark coming here. Uh, maybe on that next box coming up. She's well, got she has a good piece of wood in behind. She sure does. Has two, in fact. One over here, but the best one is the one right here. And it's got a pretty good angle on it, too. It could go in a hurry. One, two, five. Oh. It's got on the wrong side. It well, wood back. coming back here. Tap. She's got the, the real wood pile now. Could leave the ten. That's the pin on the far right-hand side. Eight, There's nine, shot. Down back there. And she does leave the ten, but gets the other three. So, Peggy Glenn. Hops over the ball round. Yeah. <laughs> Takes the shortest route to her sixth frame. Did I say sixth frame? Somebody said it. There's only you and I here, and it wasn't me. Fourteenth frame <laughs> overall, number four in the second <laughs> string. Yes, well, here's the reverse of yeah. what Charlie had. Uh, nice nice um, conversion Charlie had on this leave, your leave this time. It's a Horseman oh, on the right and shot. the eight pin in behind and she got him. Oh, that was a good shot by Peggy. That shot, you have to be real perfect on. Just touch that the wood. That coverage the ball. Was yeah, made what that made shot. made the difference. Absolutely. Well, now let's see what Michael Farrow can do. Ten and a nine to open here in the second. Thirty-four. Got him all. Got strike. him all. Big strike there for Michael Farrow. The left-hand side is the last to go, but uh, all of a sudden, Durling and O'Farrow were down by 34, but there's the four going over, just going to touch on the seven, enough to take them all down. Well, I tell you what, Mike would dearly love to throw a double right here. Off the front end. Late action I get it. Yes, the sir. One. That was an interesting situation when the wood came down and uh, picked up velocity, pin falling rather, hit the wood that was down and cost, pick up great velocity, but now... Back row, seven, eight, ten. Uh, he's got a piece of wood, you can see it rolling in behind there. But this is the one he's gonna have to work with somehow, and he doesn't have a good angle on it. He, got, he has to get something over here. He has to get this pin, of course, at the same time, easily if he drives it straight back, but nothing happens with the shot. And that's the problem. Well, gets eight bonus balls, and uh, has the bedposts now. And it'd uh, be very difficult for him to get a 10 box out of here. Back to the nines, finds the hole, it's an eight. But an encouraging sign nonetheless for the uh, O'Farrell Durling duo. As Charlie Sloan White steps up, he and his partner Peggy Glenn, now with a 26 pin lead, it's been narrowed somewhat. If I'm Durling and O'Farrell, I've got to be a little concerned right now. There's only roughly uh, six frames for Bowler to come. And. Uh, Charlie Sloan might open here, picks up seven. This. Now he's going to get one more eight. So that changes the lead once again. 33 pins. A good chance here for Charlie. Should be no problem. It's not. So all of a sudden, Charlie Sloan and Peggy Glenn are sneaking away on Durling and O'Farrell. And they've got to be concerned about that. Charlie Sloan White will now roll on his spare. And remember, his partner is open when she gets up, too. Count of five for Charlie Sloan White. Leaves the diamond and the uh, seven pin in the left-hand corner. Well, the diamond in the rough. He gets this. He should get the seven, too. Here's the shot. He gets the diamond. It'll find. One half of it. Yep. Be seven carats of a 14 carat diamond. Absolutely. Only five and a 10 <laughs> carat diamond. <laughs> and he makes it good to take nine. So Charlie Sloan White continues to pin very well when he's not marking. As Sloan White and Peggy Glenn ever so slowly now are creeping away on Durling and O'Farrow. And uh, I tell you what, Durling and O'Farrow have six frames to come and they've really got to start bearing down. Okay, well, we'll take a look at Barb Durling. She's sitting down. I see her over there concentrating. Should be interesting to see what she does in her next couple of frames. We'll have them after these messages. Bow, bow, 
Toyota gives new meaning to the word special. Special two-tone paint. Special wheels. Special seats. Special AM FM radio. And special name. Introducing the 1989 special edition Toyota 4Runner. Your turn, Dad. Special from the paint on down. Tim Hortons takes a fresh look at coffee. It's tricky telling the difference between our fresh brewed coffee and theirs just by looking. Of course, that's the real world. This is television. <laughs> Tim Hortons takes a fresh look at cakes. Whatever you're celebrating, whatever your message, whatever your tastes, a fresh Tim Hortons cake makes it a piece of cake. Fresh breath dentine, with sugar or without. All you gotta do is take your pick. Meet the Mazda MPV, voted best vehicle in its class by the Automotive Journalists Association of Canada. MPV carries seven like a wagon. It's versatile like a van. And with its responsive V6, it performs like a Mazda. Best of all, MPV has the best warranty in the business. MPV, with conventional two-wheel drive, or now with four-wheel drive performance. This year, make it a Mazda. Well, just six frames to go, Bruce, and uh, as we took a look at the uh, scores during that last break, calculations uh, show us that it's a 40-pin difference, Glenn and Slon White, with that lead. And it's uh, sizable, but not uh, one that can't be overcome by Durling and Barrow. Now's the time. And she's going to get that pin. No, she's not going to get that pin. Boy, this lady is not getting a break at all today. And that's going to roll off the plate. There's another one rolling around in front. And probably will line up with the pin there and uh, mess this shot up. The way things have been going for Barb. Ah, she wants that out of the way. That'll give her a chance at least to throw the five over on the seven or get the ball over. Okay, she's all set. Oh, just within an eyelash. Had the right idea. He's just not had any breaks today. And again, this is on the right hand side. She has to settle for an eight. That goes to 42 pins now. In favor of Glenn and Slam White. And they are open, or at least Peggy Glenn is open. On a spare when she gets up. Well, she's found the head pin this time. Well, again, but like you say, no great lead, yeah. That's, that's really tough again. Now, she does have a piece of wood way over here with a bit of an angle on it. If you're down low, that might help her out a little bit. If you're down low on that wood. Kind of hard to be gutsy on a play like that. You just would have to put it in the gutter. Here's the shot. Oh, oh good try. Man, give her credit for trying Boy, that. Boh, I tell you, she brushed that standing pin. You saw it move. Just a great try. Back, cleans the plate with 10, though. That's Barb Durling. And Peggy Glenn is up. Peggy open on the spare. 48. Three strings so far in front of our ATV cameras. 116, 135, and 108. She's all the car right now. This lady's bowling very, very well. Going to count five on her spare. The wood in there might help her a bit too. There's a shot. Uh, you have to be on the pin that you're looking right now on the left hand side of the three. It's one of the three, and that's the settle for an eight. Other side for Peggy Glenn. Thin. It's left her a tough split with the six 
Eight, uh, six, nine, ten on the right-hand side, four, seven on the left-hand side. So I have to try and get that wood into play somehow and punch it across. Here's the shot. No. Way up high in the wood. She was trying to get low, down low in the wood and toss, try and toss it across. That was a tough shot. Now she has three on the right-hand side. She'd like to have them all. Well, he gets one. So, all of a sudden, lead now is put down to 41 pins. And Mike O'Farrell was up. Mike had a strike in the third. Right now he's at 45 after four. This is a guy that can make things happen in a hurry. Late action there in a big Great way. Action. He's got the two on the bedposts. Seven and ten. Wood all around in behind that. A little bit of angle on this wood that's in behind here to carry it straight back across, but uh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Oh, Good yeah. shot. Oh, did he Just take those? A, boy, he makes them happen in a hurry. Let's go back and look at this one in slow motion. Look at that pin right through the air, right over top of the wood. That's a big mark for Michael Farrow and his teammate Barb Doring has been loaded up. That's the key here. Get those bonus pins. A strike. strike on the spare. Just what the Derling O'Farrell duo needed. It came and <laughs> couldn't have come go away, folks. Oh, Actually, boy. he's got nine and a half here, Paul, because the, watching that pin on the right-hand side, it's not going to go down all the way. Whether we'll follow all the way through here, but it's going to lean and stop and bounce and stop. <laughs> well, I will give him the strike. Okay. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie Sloan White. Charlie, oh, well, I'll tell you something. Just four frames ago, O'Farrell and Durling were down by 48 pins. Now, they're down, uh, down by only 31 pins, and they're open on a strike. So this game has changed in drastic fashion in the last few moments. And of course, Mike O'Farrell and Barb Durling hope it continues. Charlie Anything can happen three. now. So we've got an even 30 pins. Let's say um, Mike gets eight on his strike, down to 22. It's getting that close. Of course, Charlie Sloan Mike might have something to say about that as he bowls here in the sixth. To the right-hand side a little bit, once that pin, but will not get it with the rolling wood. Uh, he's converted this before. Yeah. Did it a little earlier in this frame. See if he can do it again. All he's got to do is remember what he did. Oh, good Does shot. Oh, that's a great shot. He didn't even use that wood that was uh, resting against the nine. He just went at it and got it. And watch the pin out in front come right back and take out the nine. That's just a great shot. A great, great shot. Barb Durling. Now set to go. There you see the score. It's only a 30 pin difference. 30 pins. Barb Durling right now. She would love to pick up a mark. And she gets that, that late pin there. That's up to four horsemen. Okay, Barb. See what you can do here. Got these Big four mark. horsemen, yeah. Big mark by Charlie Slumwood a moment ago. Take some of the advantage that Michael Farrow had built up for his team. Oh, it's on the after pin just a touch too fine. Hit that two pin now, and Barb's got herself a ten box. Just get it by the right hand side. That has been her problem today. That's the right hand side because she's missing one. All right, goes to the other side now to finish off the eighth frame. Oh, there's a ball. One three pocket. Oh, my. Isn't that. Well, maybe that's not so bad. That wood then is again, the wood is leaving away. Oh, boy. You can see the reaction to Barb Durling as she turned back toward her partner. Well, make him off that piece of wood and be able to get the 10 and get the wood over. No. That pin's out in front. It's the 4. It's the 4 the 10. 10. I have to go to the right-hand side. I do believe she does. She was trying to chip that pin over. Boy, this lady has really had some tough luck. Cut the wood, not 
to be, though. A couple of eight for Barb Durling. She says, I'm a much better bowler than that, and you are, Barb. And you get a chance to prove it now in the ninth and the tenth. Maybe things will go a little more your way. Right now, we're looking at Peggy Glenn. She was seven over at 67. The lady has been very, very steady. She wanted that four pin, and she's not going to get it on the left-hand side. So she has the three, the six, and the ten on the right-hand side, four on the left-hand side. A little too flush. Bang. Got it with a nine. side now. Boy, I tell you what, the nails are starting to get charred a little bit here. More horsemen for Peggy Glenn. Putting a buzz on those nails. <laughs> that was a cuticle comment. <laughs> I think he'd like to nail this pin down. <laughs> Bang, does? Yeah. Partner certainly can't point the finger at her. <laughs> Doing real well, Peggy Glenn. Uh, Michael Farrow up now on the strike. Yeah. Love to have the double. Oh. Far to the left. What he's dealing with right now are, are these pins, right? That one, that one, that one, and of course this one. This one's pretty well automatic, the tan with the wood that's in behind there. Here's the shot still on the strike. Oh. I'll and take seven the bonus. <clears throat> did catch seven. That cuts the lead to 26 pins. Mm. Oh, look at the wood on the move. Flew around there in between the uh, one and the seven. Well, Barb Durling with a couple of eights and Michael Farrow with an eight here. You see, that's a drop of six pins right there. Got to improve the pinning. And really start thinking Mark. Good hit. Do you believe it? Well, well. five, seven. He really moves the pins down or moves the pins around down there. But uh, tough split. Good try. Just missing. Thought of that with a nine. But Barb Durling and Michael Farrow only have four frames to go each. They're down by 29. The man you're watching right now, Charlie Sloan, while he's open on a spare. So it might be despair for O'Farrell and Durling. He's got five on it. Piece of wood in behind the one may be a help. A little backer, but no, he had to be on the one. Pin for Charlie Sloan White, though, doesn't leave anything lying around as I get it officially now is 33 pins the difference between the two teams. Good hit by Charlie Sloan White. Not a bad leave. He's got to be a little bit cautious. He could come off the nose of that wood and miss. The pin. Here's the shot. Mm. Left hand side. You know, big Mark, for uh, yeah, Charlie Sloan right there, and you're that right. That is Bruce. a big break for Durling and O'Farrell. Sure is. They're not out of it yet. No, it's just a good shot. Do. Played it well, came off the wood and made it good. So the difference now is 34 pins. A couple of frames for Bowler to come. And we'll come back with those in just a moment. Only the lonely. 
Live International presents the legendary Roy Orbison in one of his last great performances. Captured for all time on this incredible home video. If you like Roy Orbison, you'll love the home video of the year. A special tribute to Roy Orbison. Only $19.99 from K5. Available at Zellers, Wolco Woolworth, Presky Kmart, and Canadian Tire Stores. Car and Driver magazine christened it a striking piece of automotive sculpture. It has a 138 horsepower engine, a drag coefficient that embarrasses the Porsche 911, and a multi-link suspension with optional full-time all-wheel drive. Introducing the 1990 Nissan Access, the first sports car for parents. Hi, I'm Brian Phillips. Monday morning at 7-Eleven, tune in to 92 CJCH for the easiest way to win $2,000 cash. Monday morning at 7-Eleven, I'll pull a name out of a hat. If your name matches, call me. The ninth caller wins $2,000. The 92 CJCH name game. It's as easy as knowing your own name. Monday morning at 7-Eleven, someone's going to win $2,000 cash. It might as well be you. And it's only a 92 CJCH. Favorites of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Why the cake? Easy. You come here, you always know you're gonna have a good it's time. It's a nice feeling here. It's where we bring our friends. Yeah, and you don't have to get all dressed up. I mean, it's all really relaxed and casual. No hassle. That's right. You never have to worry about having some fun. You just be yourself. That's what I like about the cake. It's steak of the art. Very special steak dinners for a limited time only. The cake tonight. It's nitty-gritty time here at Basley Lanes in this Mark 10 Mixed Candle Pin Championship. First episode of round two, Barb Durling and Michael Farrell behind the eight pin. I guess that's the term we'd <laughs> use in this game. 34 pins down. They've really got to think Mark. And again, Barb Durling top to the right-hand side. She's had the same problem all day long. It's just a shame she hasn't been able to make that adjustment. She did show a few flashes of brilliance. I have to give her that. But she basically has fought the pins all day. And that's too bad because she's an excellent bowler. Look at that. There's a great shot, and there's another problem she's been having all day. She can't seem to buy a break. The combination of the two have put her in her hole. That's real tough. Oh, she's she got gets that it for one. A 10. So well. far, gets the 10, but really, she has to be thinking of uh, marking. Like double strike. Oh, she really needs a mark right here to help out her teammate, to give him a chance. And sometimes when you need one that badly, it's, uh, you have a tendency to push too hard. Oh, Again, right over on side. the right-hand side. Well, maybe she can spare this up. She's got to throw the strike ball maybe into that one-two pocket. Now, here's where she's going to make the big adjustment to her ball. She's been trying all day to correct that. If she feels extra correction now, she'll be able to get it with coming back. Helps out a little bit. That pin would have been the problem pin in this yeah. next shot. Well, I'd like to clean the plate and get 10 here, but uh, it's going to be a real tough road to hole now. Only one of the three. Well, the difference now is 36 pins that her partner, Michael Farrell, will have to make up. Certainly not impossible, but it's going to be tough. Let's see what Peggy Glenn can do. Glenn and Slotman, of course, can help Durling and O'Farrell if they falter a little bit. They look strong right now. Peggy Glenn. Ooh. Nice drop there, getting the seven late. Leads to three, six, ten. She's had no problems getting yeah. breaks. Peggy gets this one. The door may sound a resounding crash. I think I just heard it. And she may have just shut the door on O'Farrell and Durling. <laughs> Lays it nice on the inside, just brushes the 10, comes back to do the job, does the 6. Peggy Glenn now goes to the other side. Good hit. Again, the 7 drops late and sets up another good spare chance. Make it 43 pins right now. Oh, on the 
the left-hand side, but uh, Glenn and Sloan White, very, very tough now. Gets them both. Peggy Glenn picks up her 10. So, Michael Farrow comes up, but uh, he is uh, just thinking nothing but strike right now. A couple of frames to come. He has two, then Charlie Slomite has two, and that's all. Back off to the right-hand side. Four horsemen. Mike O'Farrell from Stellarton Road into Glasgow, playing out the string here. But it will not be he and his partner who will move on to round number two. Rather, it will be Peggy Glenn and Charlie Sloan White. We're going to see Charlie in just a moment. But hey, this guy has uh, been a winner. He bowled very, very well, as did his partner, Barb Durling, when they compiled 481 pins in the first round. They the string. Yeah, there's a big strike for Mike O'Farrell. Go back one more time. Bang. Let them go. There's the five standing. And there's the five, five rather, falling. So, everybody at O'Farrow Shivels. Welcome this guy back. Oh, he's looking for the double and he came in. He's got it. He got it. the double. <laughs> well... Money player there, Mike O'Farrell. Oh, absolutely. Looking for the triple. It'll be exciting. But oh, isn't that a heartbreaker? He got right on the front pin. Mike O'Farrell finishes with a big, big flurry at the double strike. He got on right on the object pin for the third time around, and it really turned against him. Mike O'Farrell and Barb Durling. Barb Durling, remember her, 133-113 in the first round from Lawrencetown, Annapolis County, and the beautiful Annapolis Valley. Everybody at LMK Lanes will roll out the red carpet for you, Barb. Say welcome you back home. Charlie Sloan White now. Waiting for that wood to come rolling back. It's going to roll in behind. Sloan White. Barb Gerling and Michael Farrell finish at 401. Glenn and Sloan White currently at 423. So this matches history. Oh, yes. But, but uh, I'll tell you what, with that flurry of Michael Farrell's, though, he finishes off with an excellent 129. Charlie Sloan White right now playing with the string. And I suppose thinking on to the third round as they are getting ever so closer. The semifinals. The championship itself. Charlie Sloan White back through. Hundred and five right now. He's got eight down. Bang down nine. So Charlie finishes with an excellent one fourteen. And it is Charlie Sloan White and Peggy Glenn who will move on, but uh, just keep in mind, uh, it wasn't the greatest day or the finest hour for Barb Durling, but she has uh, provided us with many, many thrills over the uh, weeks in this series and in the previous series. And she'll be back, you can be sure. And Michael Farrow, a newcomer now in front of our cameras, looked real, real strong in both rounds here. You can be sure you'll see him again, too. Charlie's going to be awfully happy because he beat his partner, Peggy Glenn, in the <laughs> second string. We'll come back and talk to them in just a moment. or the West Coast, from Toronto or in Newark, we can fly you to more destinations in Canada than any other airline. We've created the most extensive network this country has ever seen. Together with our partners, we offer you over 900 well-timed departures every business day. Because we have a name to live up to. The 
Are you looking for a job, or perhaps a better job? I can help you. I'm Marie Waters from the Halifax Business Academy. Our graduates are finding jobs. Students love it here. This September, the Academy offers a dynamic 10-month program training men and women for just about any aspect of business. Accounting, computers, sales, hospitality, secretarial. The Halifax Business Academy is one of a kind. Join us this September. You'll never regret it. Well, we say goodbye to Barb Durling and Michael Farrell. Congratulations to them. Uh, tough going for Barb today. You really had a feel for her. Yes, I did. Let's talk about you two kids. You got a little competition <laughs> going back and forth. And uh, Charlie has been taking some ribbing from the crowd and his inability to catch Peggy when she <laughs> gets <me>. going. <laughs> has it been tough? Oh, it's been really tough. <laughs> it's not just them struggling with them. It's struggling with people in the audience, too. <laughs> well, the good news is, Charlie, you beat her in the second string. The bad news is two-string total. You won again, Peggy. That's great. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Though, she's my sister-in-law. She's carrying me. <laughs> Sorry to add fuel to the fire, Charlie. We'll see how they treat you in the, uh, the third round. Next week, we've got Rose Orson, Robert Slomwhite, Anna Mullen, Paul Chase as round two continues here at Basilie Lane's the Mark 10 Mixed Candle Pin Championship for Bruce Steven. I'm Paul Menier. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week. This has been an ATV presentation. Car and Driver magazine christened it a striking piece of automotive sculpture. It has a 138 horsepower engine, a drag coefficient that embarrasses the Porsche 911, and a multi-link suspension with optional full-time all-wheel drive. Introducing the 1990 Nissan Access. The first sports car for parents. Presenting real live winners in the game of Scrabble at McDonald's. Black Lung Hen walked into a McDonald's in Vancouver, B.C. and won $100,000 instantly. Patrick Scarry won $5,000. Valerie Reed won a trip to Disneyland. Donald Knight and Jeremy Woodruff won $1,000 Sears shopping sprees. Jody Leader won a holiday in week. Felix Gelbar and Harold Shum each won $50. So come and play Scrabble at McDonald's. In a word, you could win. Brayton's food brokers since 1875 present a carousel of values from sunny Australia. Premium globe corned beef, specially packed for Canadian tastes in three convenient sizes. 190 grams, great for lunches and camping. 340 gram family size and two and three quarter kilos, ideal for delis and parties. Tried corned beef hash lately? Also savory globe corned beef loaf. Delicious and crisp salads on cold cup plates or the hors d'oeuvre tray. Very versatile and both have an easy key opener. Foods of worth. Brought to your favorite grocery store by Creighton's Limited. Why wait to find out you need first aid and CPR training? First aid and CPR save lives. Take it from us. St. John Ambulance, Canada's leader in first aid training. L.A. Law, Thursdays at 7.30 on ATV.